Hey guys, welcome back. A uh, quick video here on how to calculate angular acceleration. So we're going to do a quick reminder overview saying that if we're doing circular motion problems, uh, we're going to start off with angular displacement, which is equal to theta, which is equal to like the number of revolutions or rotations our body has turned in total, uh, whether that units is in radians or degrees or revolutions. Um, if we go and derive that, if we find the rate of change of angular displacement, we get angular velocity. And if we find the rate of change of that, basically derive that again, we get angular acceleration. So if theta is typically in units of radians, then angular velocity is typically in radian per second, and angular acceleration is typically radians per second squared. And for all of the problems that you're going to encounter at this level, basically we're going to be just considering a constant angular acceleration. So we can write this as just the change in angular velocity over time. So that would be omega f minus omega i over whatever that duration is that it changes over. So if we had some problem where we have a, a spinning disk that is going from 1000 RPM to uh, let's say accelerating constantly to 3000 rpm um, over five seconds uh, well, let's figure out what that angular acceleration is in that case so first we would convert the rpms to radians per second so omega i would be 1000 rpm so that is 1000 revolutions per minute now to convert that, we need to change revolutions to radians. So that is going to be two pi radians per one revolution. And we're also going to convert the minutes to seconds. So we have one minute per 60 seconds. Okay, so when we look at the units here, revolutions cancels with revolutions, minutes cancels with minutes, and we're left with radians per second. And 1,000 times 2 pi over 60. Um, you can leave the pi in, but it's just going to give us a bunch of decimal places in this case, so let's not bother. It's just going to basically come out to 104.7 radians per second. We can calculate the final angular velocity as well, omega f, which is equal to 3,000 revolutions per minute. Uh, you can acknowledge right now that it's three times bigger than the initial angular velocity and just multiply 104.7 times three, or you can go through with the full dimensional analysis again and go two pi radians over one revolution times one minute over 60 seconds. Do the exact same process of units canceling, revolutions, revolutions, minutes, and minutes, and we would get 300 and 14.2 radians per second. This is a much cleaner number. This is actually just 100 pi, um, but because the first one didn't really, it just gives us decimal places anyways, whatever, let's just go with the decimals versions here. So if we want to just substitute that in for finding out what our angular acceleration is, then we have 314.2 radians per second minus uh, omega i, which was 104.7 radians per second over our interval this took five seconds and that's going to give us 41.3 radians per second squared for our angular acceleration in this example so that's a pretty typical basic problem that you would be given just usually converting from rpm to radians per second and then simply following this expression here to find angular acceleration